recommendations of the last review of our electoral laws. Short memory. Question number nine, Jonathan Young. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Energy and Resources and asks, does she stand by all her statements and actions regarding the government's decision to ban further offshore oil and gas exploration? Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Dr Megan Woods. Yes, in particular I stand by my statement welcoming the recent news that New Zealand's largest gas user has secured supplies until 2029. It's good to see this level of certainty in the context of the long-term transition we announced in April. Does the Minister acknowledge that the data reported to MB this year shows that current gas demand can only be accommodated by current supply until approximately January 2020. Mr Speaker, the quality assured data reported in the, in the um, data from MB shows that we have 10 around 10.5 years of gas. This has been the S of 2P reserves. This has been the number that it has been for the last 20 years on average, give or take a few points. Nothing has changed. The member needs to realise there is 100,000 square kilometres off the coast of New Zealand that is available for exploration. In fact, we have the busiest drilling se season that Taranaki has seen in years coming up, and that member should be pleased. Is the member aware that according to the data reported to MB this year, that the 2020 shortfall between what is produced and what is needed is more than the entire consumption of households over the whole country. Mr Speaker, the quality assured data reported to MB, the 2P reserves, show that we have 10.5 years, years of gas reserves left. This is, I repeat, what it has been on average, give or take a couple of percent, for the last 20 odd years. The, would, does that member seriously think that Todd Energy would have just invested $100 million in a gas peaking plant that's due to be completed in 2020 if they really really believed that was the case. Despite the Minister referring to the abstract... Order, order, start with a question. Will the Minister, despite her referring to the abstract equation of 10.5 years, guarantee to New Zealand households, schools, hospitals and businesses who rely on gas that they will not be hit by massive price spikes, as has happened in Australia because of domestic gas shortages. Mr Speaker, I repeat to that member, this is a long-term transition. We have exploration permits that go out for 30 and 40 years. If that member really thinks we're about to run out of gas in 2020, then he should talk to his boss, the former Minister of Energy and Resources, Simon Bridges, who was obviously asleep at the wheel as the minister if that's what he was presiding over. Will the Minister guarantee to New Zealand households, to schools, hospitals and businesses that rely on gas, that based on this data provided to MB, that they will not be hit by massive price spikes? What I rely on is the quality assured data supplied to MB that shows, just like we have for the previous two decades, give or take a couple of percent, we have 10.5 years of gas in reserve. If there really is to be a shortage, this is something that has been building up over the last decade. So that member needs to look to members within his own party because decisions that were made 10, 15 years ago are what will have an impact there. The Right Hon. Winston Peters. Uh, will the Minister explain, in addition to Todd Energy's recent decision, what the Methanex recent decision means with respect to this um, point of not being able to gain supply into the future? Mr Speaker, 
As um, mentioned in my primary answer, that Methanex has just signed a contract through to 2029. That what we see is investments decisions being made with the knowledge the sky isn't falling in. I suggest that member and its party, with its newfound commitment to climate change, may want to consider that too. What is the Minister's plan for supplying enough gas to New Zealanders that even though Methanex have signed an agreement with no new gas yet being discovered, what is her response if over the next two years of exploratory drilling they prove unsuccessful? Mr. Speaker, Mr Speaker, the deal that Methanex entered into through to 2029 is exactly the same kind of deal they have been entering in for the last few years. There is nothing new here. I repeat to that member that all the exploration permits that existed before our announcement exist. That is 100,000 square kilometres off the coast of New Zealand that is available for exploration. If there were to be no fines in that, then it's a good job this government government has a plan to transition those communities and those people that are reliant on those jobs. Question number 10, Joe Luxton. Uh, my question is to the Minister of